Well, hello, and welcome to Marty Plays Games. We are on the midweek stream, and we are taking a look at Democracy 4 on the PC. Now, this is a game from Jan 2022, and it is from... Posse Tech Games, where it lets you take the role of a president or prime minister, govern the country, choosing its policies, laws, and other actions, and both transform the country as you see fit while trying to retain enough popularity to get re elected. So that's going to be fun, eh? Now we're going to take a quick look at the options. And so this is a strategy game that has very positive reviews. Overall, 83% recent, no, 87% recent and 83% overall. And we have theme options, so dark or light. We're playing this at 1440p. We have it at 100% scaling and it is full screen it's proper full screen but this game didn't scale properly so i had to override it in the os settings to force it to scale so something's not quite right with your code there mr developer and so we've had to turn the music right down because it was a blaster now it's hitting around about halfway now on obs so that's looked pretty good uh, and that's pretty much all the options you've got, that's your only screen. I don't think we've got ray tracing in this one. Hopefully the UI is reasonably visible. Well, those fonts are a little bit small. Um, can we scale the UI? Is that going to break? I hope not. Alright, I think that's a little bit better. I've just increased the scaling a little bit. Just so that we can see the text a little bit easier. So let's play a new game. Looks like this game does support mods. So we can be the United States. Why has that got one star? Oh, because it's not very difficult. If we want to be the United Kingdom, apparently we're very, very difficult because UK politics is difficult. Australia is only kind of difficult. Canada apparently is very easy. It hasn't got a difficulty. So all the Canadian people, they're just very happy, obviously. Uh, we have Spain, we have Germany, I am kind of quite happy, Italy, yeah, they're not that happy, and South Korea. So, I think I, well I was tempted to go for the UK but it's got five star difficulty. So I think I'm actually going to go with Australia. The Commonwealth of Australia is a federal parliament constitutional monarchy. And that's a bit of a mouthful. It's comprised of the mainland Australian continent, Tasmania and many smaller islands. The former British Conway first became a democracy in 1901. In 1902, women were given the right to vote at a federal level, and compulsory voting was introduced in 1924. In 1960, voting rights were expanded to include all Aboriginal people. So, the original inhabitants of Australia, when it became a democracy, couldn't vote. Not until 1962. What's that all about then? 
That doesn't seem very democratic to me. And forcing people to vote don't seem very democratic to me because you don't have a none of the above option, do you? I mean, there's nothing stopping people going in there and spoiling their vote, I suppose. But they've actually got to go and vote. I just, I just don't see the point in forcing people who don't want to vote to vote. I don't think it does really anything for you. I mean, it pushes your your numbers up. But is it democracy if you're forcing people? That sounds more like dictatorship to me. Anyway, Australia. With 30% with no religion and 22% Catholic. So that's quite interesting. The vast majority of people in Australia, as a percentage or group, decide that they are not religious. I don't know how that compares to other countries. Let's have a look at the UK. Yeah, they said 60% are Christian in the UK. I don't think so. I don't think they've been very Christian by lying on the surveys. And what's happened to the other 30% that we haven't listed here? Yeah. And in um, the US here, they've decided not to put religion, presumably out of um, fear of being shot for insulting people who believe in God. Uh, Christianity, only 1.5% in Japan. What about Canada then? 70% Christian, 25% unaffiliated. And South Korea? What about the Protestants? Yeah, that's a joke. 56% don't have a religion in South Korea. That doesn't that doesn't surprise me actually. If we go to Italy, they're all going to be Catholic, aren't they? Yeah, seventy percent. All righty then, Australia, we're going to play you. The party name, the defender of the faith. Can we change that? Yes, we can. The foods of fudosity. Is our party and their opposition is the complete fascist party and another one is the rain of fire from the sky party We're running at 100% difficulty with innate socialism at 100%. 25% economic cycle. No political apathy though. And the starting debt. We, why do we want debt? Hmm. We've got a national debt now of $873 billion. Or oh, Australian dollars in this case. Welcome to Democracy 4. You have just started your first term as Prime Minister and your Chief of Staff. I am here to explain how things work. The icons below show you a few key indicators of the state of our country. Hopefully you can change things for the better. Yeah, let's uh, not get ahead of ourselves. And get re-elected after your term is up. Push the button in the window below, mark to begin term of office to start governing. So gross domestic product is pretty high. Health is kind of middling. Education's good though. Unemployment is low. Crime is up. 
But I guess we did send all of our criminals from the UK to Australia. And we have quite a bit of poverty, which probably explains why crime is so high. So I think we need to introduce the death penalty. This is our main screen, so these are all our policy things, I think. From here you can survey the current state of our country. It may look complex, but all the different components work in a very similar way. The icons represent different objects in the economy or society, including policies, law, voting groups and values for important concepts such as health and education levels of our citizens. And these are the things that we have popularity or not about, I think. Conservatives are not very popular. And the environmentalists are not very popular. Really? Well, we need to change that as well. These strips on the left of the screen represent groups of voters. Ah, okay. So the environmentalists are not happy. And neither are the conservatives. Well, they're kind of... Well, I suppose they're not diametrically opposed might say that of UK Conservatives, they're, they're kind of opposed to environmental concerns. At least the ones that exited office recently. The light area behind the tech shows the percentage of our electorate that is in each of these groups. One of the key concepts of the Democracy for is to understand that individual voters can be members of many different voter groups at once. Apart from conservative environmentalists. And the extent to which they identify with those groups in itself is a variable. You will never get all of these voter groups to entirely approve of you, as some are opposites. White icons are policies to start the game with some already implemented, but most can be cancelled, many can be added. There's also adjusted. Policies are the primary method you use to govern the country. Blue icons represent statistical data relevant to your country. They concern abstract concepts such as GDP. GDP is not really an abstract concept though, is it? Strength of the economy is, is a pretty factually driven thing rather than being abstract, I would say. Crime or the education levels of your citizens, I also would not say was particularly abstract. You can affect statistical data only indirectly through policy decisions like other icons. You'll find them in different zones of the screen depending on which part of the economy or well society they represent. Icons with red or green backgrounds are situations. These are ongoing events taking place in your country which may be going well green or badly red. You can encourage good situations to prevent or fix bad ones by your policy choices. Policies, data and situations are interconnected through effects. Hovering your mouse and any one of the icons will show the influence flows between them, with green being a positive effect and red being a negative effect. The speed of the flow also shows their strength. That's quite a nice, quite a nice thing. Is it going to demonstrate that? No. It is not. Experiment this, then hit next. Well, have we got to actually click on that, have we? No, we can't even do that. No. Oh, it wants us to click on that one, doesn't it? Oh, there you go. You have to click on a specific one. So. Well, let's go. Parents. Don't like what? What is this? What are we actually looking at? Ref respiratory disease. Is that what? Is that's what that is? Is it? Okay, it is. So the environment is causing this, and it has a negative effect on parents. Car use contributes to it. Tobacco use contributes to it, and pollution contributes to it. But apparently, pollution. The environment has a negative effect on pollution. What? Surely that should be flowing the other way.
Pollution has a negative effect on environmentalists, but the environment has a negative effect on pollution. That don't seem right to me. Maybe I'm not understanding that properly. Press freedom has a positive effect on democracy. See, that makes sense. And a positive effect on corruption. Well, yeah. I suppose it makes corruption less corrupt. Better for everyone, better than the liberals like it. Oh, no, no, no. I got confused there. Corruption is on the red line. Oh, I don't like that that disappears when you mouse off of it. I'd prefer if that was a toggle. Let's take a look around a specific group of voters and find out more about them. Click on the voter strip, middle income. This window shows detailed information. Each group of voters have their own opinions and priorities. And every event or policy will affect each group in different ways. The chart currently shows the opinion of these voters and over time, you can select their income or group membership over time. And we've got different inputs to this photo group. And green effects are good and positive red effects are bad and negative. These effects may change over time as policy situations or values change. Some of all these effects goes towards determining how the group feels. You can click on individual effects as a shortcut of seeing more information about that item. And here we are at the detail screen for income tax. You can do it for anything. Income tax has a negative effect. Shocking. People don't want to pay taxes. Who knew? A slider used to control the specific policy. You can use it to adjust income tax up or down. She will change the effect it has on all the linked items, such as voter group situations, statistical data experiment with slider, and then hit next. Well, I can't, can I? I can't even get to it. How can I? Well, there's no slider for me to slide, mate. No. Now we can slide it. It has no cost. No, I suppose it just drops our income, doesn't it? And there, look. So we can see it's impacting middle income people and the wealthy. But the socialists like it, but only a little bit. And it has a good impact on equality, so. But it affects capitalists don't want to pay tax either. It ain't very popular with voters. It doesn't really give us an awful lot more change in that. So revert changes. Close. Are we playing the game now? Ah. Next turn. Return to government. This is the quarterly report. It will highlight some key indicators which impact on the current state of the country. Plus there may be other information you need to be aware of. Urgent dilemmas may appear that you need attention this quarter. Anyway, I can see you have a lot to attend to. I'll let you get to work. I'm sure the government is in safe hands now. It's in my hands. My hands are not very safe. Right, so crime. Crime affects everybody. We can do... Oh, there's all sorts of stuff here. Organised crime... Poverty, and yeah, because poverty is going to negatively impact crime, isn't it? Alcohol consumption, 
unemployment. Attacking prisoners. Where's death penalty? Liberals have the desire to rehabilitate prisoners to ensure they are capable of finding work and avoiding criminal activity on release. Conservatives see prison as a powerful deterrent, while prisoners are punished for what they have done. We have the Minister, Zoe Colling. Sounds like a made up name. Is that how much we are spending on prisons? Is that, yeah, okay. So we don't want to spend more on prison. But we do. Transport. Law and order. So, here we go. Firearm laws, no. And social behaviour. We want... Death penalty, please. Internet censorship. No, we don't want any of that. Gay marriage. We can have some of that. Gender Discrimination Act. Alcohol law. Judicial independence. We want that. Needle exchange program. That's going to have a cost associated with it. Race Discrimination Act. Right to die. Do we have a right to die? Witness protection program. I don't think we want to spend much on that. Let's drop the cost. Let's drop that. Yes. Private prisons. Now they... Surely that would have no cost. If we have private prisons... Don't they pay for themselves? I think we want to reduce that spend on private prisons. Jury trials. The right to be tried by ordinary members of the public. It's 100% popular with the voters. I think we really only want it if requested though, don't we? Because if we don't request it, why do we need it? Let's reduce some of that cost. You know, trials are expensive. Take longer if you just have a judge to uh, go make the decision. Speed things along. Much better. So corruption. Oh dear, we've got a lot of that. No, I suppose it's not too bad. Police force corruption. Every government needs to employ a police force to ensure order is kept and laws are obeyed. But it is a matter of debate exactly how much should be spent on the police. Some favour large force with the police on every street corner, or they prefer a more low-key and tolerant approach. I think we're going to increase our spending on police, because we've reduced our other costs. So that will help with our crime levels. What about you? What are you? State pensions? Oh, bloody hell. So only state pensions are only popular with 70% of the voters. Private pensions. Maybe we should have private pensions. Oh, go away. Um, I 
secularity of education. A bit of battle has raged about the way children are taught science versus religion. Scientists and liberals consider it obvious that evidence-based evolution should be taught in science class. Yes. Some religious groups feel that it is wrong to teach evolution or Darwinism as a fact. Well, it doesn't remain an unproven theory. That's just bollocks. So, we are going to go atheist. Oh, I can only go up to there, can I? I'm using all my political capital on that, apparently. We need to do something about the environment, though. So what are we going to... Let's... Where is our invite? Here's economy. Welfare. Foreign policy. Public services. Nope. Oh. Um, pollution. Let's see what's under environment then. Car usage. This is just stuff that happens on the blue stuff. So policy. Green energy sub subsidies. Pollution controls and car emission limits. I mean, people are not going to be very happy. We should probably... Oh, can we not do any more? We don't have any more political capital to spend. Where is our political capital listed then? Security briefing. This is your intelligence briefing room. We monitor a number of organizations. Some of them are relatively harmless. But they act as gateways to more extremist and dangerous groups. So we will still need to keep an eye on their membership. Our chances of preventing attacks on the government will vary based on what security policies you have in place. And our security effectiveness is ineffective. We have the Angels of Heavenly Justice. They don't seem to have very many memberships. Rural Alliance, they have a lot. Are they extremists? I don't know. Defenders of the flag. Environmental Alliance. I mean, they've got the highest membership, but I'm not surprised at that. The Senior Rights Society. I don't think we're going to have too many problems with those. If they start misbehaving themselves, we'll take away their walking sticks. Then where will they be? Falling down, that's where. Um... We don't have any capital, so we can't actually do anything with this. I've spent all my political capital. How do we actually go to the next turn then? Do we have to make a decision here? There is currently a proposal to increase the rights of tenants. Um. The rental market is a good example of a free market where landlords will compete for the best tenants. And tenants can pick and choose their homes based on price. Yeah, it doesn't really work terribly well though, does it? Many people simply cannot afford the deposit to buy a house or resign to renting their whole lives. Lack of decent protections of random evictions or rent increases means people never have the peace of mind. We are going to go with that. We've improved tenants' rights. Now we can end our turn and go to the next round. Click to return to government. So health still has improved. Crime's not really gone down. Um, I suppose it has gone down a tiny bit. It's gone down 1%. Not great though. Unemployment's gone up. Oh, that's not good. Poverty has gone down. Education has gone up. Health's all over the shop. 
the health has actually increased. That's good. So I think we're doing all right so far. This is a flu. This is like a flu, and this is a much different situation than Ebola. Okay. Knows his stuff, that guy. So, we need to do some more work. We're popular with the retired people. Religious people we don't really care that much about. They don't like gay marriage, apparently. Let's piss off all the religious people then. So I think this is all the political capital that we can spend, isn't it? So we're spending four political capital there. We could spend 14 political capital and then we wouldn't be able to do any more turns. So let's spend four political capital on gay marriage. Yes. We need to do something about this repris uh, respiratory disease. So, oh, I don't want to see. I want to see the links, please. Stop clicking on it. <clears throat> it, it. It impacts our productivity. What can we do about pollution then? Is there any policy? Can we see out there? No. There's not actually any policy that we can change to impact pollution, apparently. Car usage, though. We can car tax, toll roads, change emission and petrol tax. So, well, petrol tax is not going to be particularly popular. We can't actually increase that though. This is going to cost us too much political capital, is it? Um, where's our cars gone? There it is. What about the car emissions limit then? We can increase that. Why would it cost us more money? Setting legal limits with exhaust fumes helps reduce the air pollution, especially in cities, but there is isn't popular with motors so look but there's yet more bureaucracy and tax. Well, <clears throat> it's only limiting the emissions, isn't it? It's not actually taxing them. I really think we should do it. But I think we should increase it to there, to medium. It's going to cost us four political capital. It's going to do better than it is doing harm. Nobody's the only only the motorists are very very slightly annoyed about it. So I think this is one that we can do to help our environmental concerns, and it will push more people into electric cars. I mean, its own problems, but less fossil fuels is better. We got some more transport there. State railway company has a massive negative effect on the rail industry apparently but the trade unions like it the capitalists don't but it does increase our productivity but for some reason it increases unemployment and poverty I'm not sure how that doesn't seem to make that much sense Unemployment benefit. Of 
Oh, like it. The capitalist stone. <clears throat> How is she actually doing anything? This shows the level of your political capital. So we've got five political capital left to play with. Violent video games. Leave unchanged. I don't want to go changing that stuff. We like our Call of Duty. Consumer rights. Automated refunds. The state guarantees the consumer is not totally ripped off. That sounds good. At the other end of the spectrum, draconian legislation can benefit the consumer at the expense of business. Fuck business. So we can increase that to there. Doesn't really... Self-employed don't like it especially. But I mean, it's not impacting GDP. Especially. So I think we will do that. Yes, please. We have two political points left to spend. Is that Bitcoin? We'll get some Bitcoin. It is. Cryptocurrency adoption. Helps with technology. Labour laws. Impact wages and the working week. Can't actually do anything with that one then. State pensions, we're not going to do anything with at the moment, I think. Um, plastic bag tax. Oh, we're already doing that. It's not very popular with voters, though. So. We do get some income from it, not an awful lot. But if we change this, it probably increases. Pollution. So it reduces environmental. Not a great deal. I think we will reduce that a little bit. Doesn't actually cost us any political capital though. Huh? Intellectual property rights. Maximum. Go away. Why would intellectual property rights increase in technology? All it does is um, do horrible things. We don't want that. We want to reduce it. We can't reduce it though. Because we don't have enough political capital. Uh, revert changes. What about these little ones? These little ones probably don't cost us very much. They don't. Drug treatment scheme. We'll have some of that. It's minimal cost. And that uses up our political capital that we've got this quarter. Yes, and we can go to the next turn. The parties, how are we doing? The foot of fodosity. Are we popular? This is the electioneering screen where you can choose between different tabs to view different aspects of your party and candidates. So, manifesto, put it to the testo. They're optional, but if you need last minute pre-election boost, we can make grandiose claims. Speeches can be made in the turns leading up to the election. Fundraising. Through party activists and wealthy donors. The rain of five from the sky party is getting a lot of investments at the moment, I looks things. 
Perceptions. The party's perception of our candidates. We can do a media stunt for extra trustworthiness. And we're compassionate, look. We should probably do a media stunt for a strong leader. What should we do? Judo with special forces. We don't have any capital to do this. We can't actually do any of these things. Um, we could play in a charity football match. I don't think we want to be filled with a hunting rifle, do we? 62% chance of that working anyway. There's an 80% chance on that one. Interviewed while jogging. That's fine. Our cabinet ministers. We can't reshuffle them. We can't fire anybody. Does that mean they're... Um... Oh, they've got political capital. Do these all add up to our political cap capital that we can spend then? This shows you who you have working in each government department. Each minister will have a different level of experience and loyalty, both of which may change over time. Experienced ministers are more effective at their jobs and they can get policies implemented faster and cheaper. Disloyal members will provide less political capital, so you may eventually need to consider firing some or reshuffling. I'll leave it to you to decide well, for the time being. We don't have any particularly massively negative people. Lord and Order One, Zoe, Colin, we'll chuck you in prison later. Uh, how are we doing economy wise? It shows a breakdown of government expenditure. So state pensions are really expensive, state health service is expensive, because they are. Um, oil drilling subsidies, we shouldn't really be doing that. Uh, yeah, it's pretty negative effects on environmentalists. So I think on our next turn we might just reduce the subsidies, I think. Hooray, right. Crime has got up, apparently. It's shot right up. I don't know why. We increased our police forces, and it went up. Is that because we reduced private prisons, maybe? Water shortages. Nice. The aim is to create here in Britain a real hostile environment for illegal migration. Yeah, that didn't work, did it? May. Stupid policy. You know why that doesn't work, a hostile environment? Because the places that these people are coming from are even worse. They're not running away for no good reason, are they? Free eye tests. I think we want to reduce free eye tests. I mean, we're going to do a stun, weren't we? So, well, that's our expenditure. That was under. No. That one? Yes. No? Ah, there it is. Perception. Me distance, we're gonna go jogging. The event has backfired spectacularly. And if anything, it's made us look worse to the electorate. Let's fire our spin doctors. Fools, that didn't go very well. Bollocks. Uh, we're down to two political capitals. So I don't think we're going to be able to change 
Um, economy, I think that's going to be in. Recycling, retirement age. Where's subsidies? Subsidies? Pollution controls. I think we're going to increase that. We'll use all the rest of our political capital. Go on to our next turn. How are we doing for crime? Crime's actually come down a bit, which is good. Unemployment's gone up a little bit. GDP's... Oh, it's gone down a little bit. Poverty has reduced. Education going up still. Science funding. We, I think we should probably increase that then. Your approval rating is disappointing. If we believe polls, you would get just three percent of the vote. Not bad. None of them like us. How can they not like us? We're doing all the right things in all the right order. Where is... I don't want an antibiotics ban. It's not really very popular with voters though. I don't want to get... That's going to have an impact on the environment. So I don't really want to cancel that. Oil subsidies, yes. This. Popularity with voters is not popular at all. So I think we will put a minimal on that. Because it's costing us a lot of money, look. And there's no income for it. Travellers write, a local council recently demolished some old abandoned housing leaving empty land for trailers to park their caravans on. The local people are angry and wish to have them moved. Why? What did they ever do to you? We're going to allow the travellers to stay. How's a crime? It's gone down a bit again. Pollution. Environment experts tell us that our country's pollution problem is now under control and our citizens no longer to wear face masks. So it's starting to work. That's good then. See, all this stuff worked. Our loyalty of our cabinet ministers is supportive. The budget has a deficit of 7.1 billion. Yeah. So we need to increase taxes or reduce some spendings. At least we've got some six. We've gone up four percent in the poll. Well, that's pretty good. Reasonable force law. A recent court case where a raw man shot and killed a teenage burglar in his own home has thrown a spotlight on the law regarding reasonable force when defending property, given that the homeowner was prosecuted for manslaughter. unquestioned right to defend our property. We should make it clear that the police will turn a blind eye to whatever means homeowners deploy to defend themselves. If a burglar gets machine gunned in another person's kitchen, that's just karma. Do you know how you can avoid getting machine gunned in another person's kitchen? Don't break into the house. Then it won't happen, will it? Select. Good. Let's continue then. Yep, 
Who can we tax without pissing anybody off? Clean energy subsidies. Oh, I think we should increase those though. We got rid of the oil, didn't we? Pollution controls. Well, at the moment we're okay with that. Um, our education system. I think we can reduce the costs there a little bit. It's only a million though, it's not really going to have very much impact. I don't think we need to do anything with that. I want, we need something that's big impact. Refugee policy. Immigration rules. Oh, immigration was very tight in Australia from what I understand. Child benefit. Social care. Disability benefit. Uh, can we reduce that? That is going to have some reduction. Yes! Holes! We've gone up to 10%! Oh. What happened to the summary bit? Ah, oh, there it is. Security briefing. The Environmental Alliance are criticising the government policies on the online forums. So we can implement body cameras. Yes, let's do that. Police force. Prisons. Game hunting restrictions. What have we got here then? Doesn't really cost us very much. It isn't very popular with voters though. Yes, we're going to cancel that policy. How did we get new policies up then? So we want... Um, no. Farmers. Everyone. Prime. Affects everyone. Organised crime. No, you don't want to do that. Now, oh, there we go. Policy ideas. On law and order. Death penalty, there it is. We don't have sufficient capital. What do we need to implement this? We can do a healthy eating campaign. Keep the country tidy campaign. Social Justice Foundation. Eighteen to sixty million costs. Well, that's not too bad, and it's quite popular. So we'll implement that. Apply changes. A new major party donor. Potentially bad situation with obesity. Compulsory food labouring. Yes, please. Budget report, security briefing. Mining on Aboriginal 
land. I think we'll split ownership. Sounds pretty good. Crime has gone up, is it? I'm not doing terribly well on crime, are we? The beast has gone right up. Just stop eating then. Ministerial resignation. Higher. Loyalty. We want loyal person. Ah, yeah, we'll have you. Thank you. Yes. So, as you can see with this game, it's a lot of just clicking on circles and changing sliders and stuff. But it's interesting to see how all of these different things interact. Whether it is that true to life, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, they, a lot of these things have way more consequences than you'd think from a couple of green lines, like child benefit and stuff. But, I'm, I mean, you've got to keep these things reasonably simple for game engine purposes but as a flavour of running a government I suppose it does an okay job it's quite pricey for the type of game that it is I think I mean that's not ridiculously expensive it's 23 pounds on and 23 UK pounds on Steam but I have seen this on sale quite a few times and there is a democracy 3 and presumably there's a Democracy 2 and 1 as well. I've never played those. But I think if you have a passing interest in politics and how policy making decisions work, you might get something out of this one. I would say probably wait for a sale before you grab it. But overall, it's uh, an interesting game, I think. Interesting strategy game. But that is all from me for today. I should be back again at the weekend with another game from my part of shame. Until then, I hope you have a pleasant Wednesday and I shall see you later.